Hi, I'm Ruth, and today I'm going to do a tutorial on Blockly. Blockly is a developer tool made by Google, and it's very similar, as you can see here, to Scratch. Uh, it's pretty much a block-based coding language, but you can actually set up the workspace for your user to learn how to code or play a game of some sort. Blockly is available on a few different things like web, um, iPad, your phone, uh, but this tutorial is going to be on how to use it on the web. So if you go down on this first page, developer.google.com slash Blockly, and you get started in Blockly for the web. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the zip file. So if you download this, it's going to give you a folder. Like this, which is going to have a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, but what I find most helpful to kind of start with, along with reading the documentation in here, is to go into demos and then just kind of look through them. Generator is one that I've been working off of. And you can see here an example of what Blockly is. It gives you a bunch of blocks, pretty simple if statements, um, quality and loops, math, and you can pretty much create whatever you want to create in here. Um, and then you can actually have it work within your web page because this is all pretty much JavaScript, HTML. So this example is working with an alert. So saying if this is true, then print, don't panic, which is just an alert if you go into the code. So here's an example of something that I've made kind of working off that same demo. I have a stoplight, and these are pretty much just divs. So let's turn green on. I'm just changing the color of this div. I could then turn green off and turn yellow on. And you'll notice that just by uh, changing it here, it's not actually happening here. You have to hit this button, run JavaScript. So these particular blocks aren't blocks that already exist in Blockly. These, for example, are already there. They're pretty simple. But this is a custom block. And that was something that I made to help me um, to get the user to do exactly what made sense. So when you're making a custom block, uh, you usually don't just hard code it. There are um, Blockly developer tools uh, that help you do that. So this is the workspace that they've made for you to use. And it can be kind of confusing at first. Uh, I'm not going to go super in-depth, so if you want to really get a good overview of that on this page, uh, there's a good video. But basically, you are creating a block with different blocks. So you start out with this block, you're going to name it, you're going to give it a color, um, then you pretty much make, you put stuff in that block with other blocks. So I have some text um, that's telling the block I want it to have the text turn, because uh, I don't just want to have the drop downs read and on, or that won't make sense. And then the drop downs, you can add more options, or you can take away options. And I just have a couple drop downs in here. So that's giving me this. I can change the color if I want to. Um, and it's automatically generating this code, which you might not understand at first but uh, I'll go into that in a bit. 
So that's pretty much what I did uh, to get to this demo. So part two, getting your custom code in uh, and getting it to affect a div on the page like it does here. Um, I'm going to use this really simple example. Uh, I have something similar to what I just made. Uh, I just made a really simple only one choice for red and then on or off. So if you turn red on, you hit that run JavaScript. It's just turning this big red div on. So here is the basic setup um, of a Blockly page. And this is all based off of that demo that I opened before, the generating JavaScript demo. And it has some stuff that's already linked in that's going to be important uh, just so that your code runs smoothly. And then this is my own JavaScript that I put in. And that's uh, the information on the custom block. And you can put it right in this page. I just found that it was uh, more clean to separate it out a little bit. I have up here some of my CSS. Um, this switch is going to be this big div. And I pretty much just made it a circle. Um, I gave it a border. I gave it, you know, position. Uh, so then once you get into the body of the HTML, uh, I have this button, run JavaScript, which is what's here. And that is uh, on click, uh, hitting this function, run code, uh, which we're going to come to later. Um, this stuff is generating this part right here. The toolbox is this. When you hit logic, which is category, it opens all the stuff that's going to be available in here. So I just left it with just the one block. So the block is light switch, and it has uh, what's automatically going to pop up um, before you've changed any of these. And uh, your that workspace that I showed you before is going to generate this for you. And then I just have um, my own div that I stuck in there, switch, which again was this big circle. So then getting into the JavaScript. Um, this is all going to come in the example. Pretty much you um, are putting your toolbox in your workspace. Uh, there's more information about that in the documentation if uh, you want to look at that, but uh, you don't really need to change that ever that I've come across anyway. But then there's this function run code that again was in this button run JavaScript. And this is also something that you um, might not even change, but pretty much it's taking this variable, variable code, which we are going to come across soon, and it's just running that code like it was regular JavaScript that was actually written in the page. But it's code that that comes out of this. So it's translating this Blockly code into JavaScript. So now to get to the custom blocks. Um, here, it looks kind of jumbled right now, but I'll show you how exactly I got this. Going back to Blockly Developer Tools, you have this block definition. So pretty much I just copy and paste this in first. And um, it gives you the you know the options red on off. And this last thing in the drop down, that's gonna be the name of the drop down and that's gonna be referenced later. So if I want to talk about the drop down that's red and potentially yellow and green, that's gonna be light color. And if I want to talk about the drop down that's on and off, I named that switch. Um, and this is all stuff that you've done if you've 
gone through this part, you know, setting the color and that kind of stuff. So then you copy and paste this generator stub in. And this is kind of where it gets a little more interesting. Um, you so this already came. Um, it's referencing, it's making a variable for the light color, and it's just referencing back up to here. So anytime I um, call this variable light color, it's taking whatever is currently uh, in the drop down. So that would be red since I only put one color in there. And then it's for the next variable drop down switch, it's taking whatever, whatever um, variable is currently selected on the second drop down switch. So right now it would take the drop down light color would be red and the drop down switch would be off. So then it's creating this variable code um, and just stuck in um, that variable is some JavaScript. Yeah, some JavaScript. Um, so I'm getting getting the element switch, and sorry, this is kind of confusing, but this is the switch that is this div, um, and it's setting the background color to red. So that's but that's only if the dropdown switch is on. If the dropdown switch is off, it's getting that same div, and it's turning the background color to white. So then it's just returning the code, and that again is going through this run code. You have this eval code here. So again, to show you that working. You drag this in, turn red on, you run the JavaScript, and it works. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot.